Hello, everyone. My name is Kathy Jory, and I work at Zadita. I'm going to share my presentation right here. Present mode. Okay, as I said, I work at Zadita, which is an edge software orchestration company. Uh, but the talk I'm going to present today primarily focuses around EvoS, which is an open source project under the Linux Foundation. And the really cool thing about EvoS, it's already revolutionizing the way that we manage the edge, the deployed edge, to act more like the cloud so that you, um, you can have IT people that have ownership over the edge hardware, but then the deployed applications and software are a sub tier you know, of developer operations and operational technology that the IT people don't have to fall into ransomware traps of those applications because they can always boot them out. So IT people, rather than being deployed in the field, can actually securely have remote ownership over that box. And uh, that saves a lot of money for, and they can access from work, from home, from anywhere these days, which is important in these times. So, just a little bit about me and why I'm doing this presentation, why I like this is I'm an electrical, electrical engineer, so I really appreciate good software tools and tooling that makes my life a lot easier. Um, I really love the benefits of open source software, been a big, big fan, big user for a long time. <clears throat> a couple of projects that I personally use and recommend for, for example, for programming microcontrollers, I use microblocks.fun, best tool out there. Great for learning, but just great for double E's where you don't have the pain of software problems as much. And webthings.io is a project that spun out of Mozilla. I worked on that project when I was at Mozilla. It's now a community project. I use that to have greater privacy over my smart home. It's a great, great project for that. And on the open source uh, side, the focus of this talk, like I said, is really Eve. So you can find that under uh, LF Edge and all the sources on GitHub. Um, and of course I'm biased, but the best commercial controller service for managing you know, the centralized management of deployed EVOS boxes is found at Zedita. First, I'm gonna start off with a little background. What is edge computing? Uh, when I talk about edge computing, I really mean it's anything outside the cloud. Cloud is somebody else's problem in terms of the hardware, the maintenance of the host OS on, this, on the cloud. Um, and the edge, you know, there's sort of that regional access edge, and then there's the user edge. And so the focus of EvoS is really on the user edge, not at the microcontroller level, but more at the Linux um, embedded uh, application processor level. So smart, you know, device edge uh, on-premises, data racks and servers and stuff like that. And what's different about these two, the cloud versus all these other edges, is really how you deploy and use applications. So when you're in the cloud and you wanna manage applications there over on the right side of this slide, you just ask which one, am I deploying on AWS or GCP or Azure IoT or, you know, what am, I, what am I using? And do you know what host OS? Do you know what hardware server racks power? You know, you, you don't know anything. You just know what software you can use. Instead, at the deployed edge, you're like, well, what hardware is there? What's it running? Do I need like, what's my network access? How do I reach it? There's all these questions you have in like, how do I get my software to it? And is it gonna conflict with something else? So there's a lot more problems right now with the deployed edge then that have been overcome by abstracting away those things at the, at the cloud. So why, you know, as an IT person, why should you offer that up to your application developers? Well, it's because uh, application developers don't like to have to manage the host OS and the security problems around it and manage the upgrade by the host OS and see if it conflicts with their application. So the, uh, you know, the specialized OS, OS is cater to that they let you live in the world of containers and you just deploy your own little isolated container. And, you know, it can be multi-tenant. You can run many on, on the same machine. Um, choose, choose whatever versions of dependent packages you want. You know, less, less chance that somebody else is going to crash your, your application or service. 
So this is this is the idea of cloud native, this you know, container orchestration. But <clears throat> um, so so because of that, you can you can approach it as app development is one container at a time. And the difference at the edge is usually you have to pay attention to the host OS. It's not as easily easy to be hardware agnostic. If you look at Docker container registries, they're they're dominantly you know x86 architecture um, compiled applications. And there's ARM is popular in certain niches like Vision, AI, ML, but there's not you know it's not completely agnostic. And I optimistically hope that to see RISC-V servers coming even, even next year, uh, depending on chip shortages, of course. Uh, and then the other thing about the edge is the host OS fragmentation is just, you know, what installation package management and servers. And of course you can run containers, but are you limited to only containers? What about your legacy software? You know, it's not always easy to containerize that and then you just deploy more hardware uh, to deal with legacy and containers at the same time. And then uh, if you are multi-tenant, could other things crash your application? So the OS does become the inter integration point at the edge. And you often have to, you know, find good service providers to help you help you manage that. So what is EvoS? Again, it's an open source operating system for the edge. Unlike many OSs, it's, um, it's not standalone. It doesn't actually function on its own. It's secure by design boot process, requires an external controller. Like the first thing it does is phone home and say, who's telling me what to do? Because I don't do anything without being told. And, uh, and so the controller manages it over this open Eve API, which has a whole bunch of security requirements that require the messaging, certificate-based messaging over the transport layer security. So it's secure by design and the OS itself is very lightweight, meant for virtualizing everything underlying hardware so that applications can be multi-tenant. And uh, it includes very little extra just for reliability and security. And um, the way it does that, you get your hardware layer and the actual hardware deployed in the field, but it's similar to the ease of managing software in the cloud in the sense that the edge virtualization engine has a container layer for VMs and, and containers. And again, this is under the LF edge of the Linux foundation. Uh, it's also designed for reliability in the sense that there are two partitions uh, Eve takes about 250 meg of space for hard disk space. And there are two partitions so that you always have, have to have set aside 500 megs so that you can always fall back when you're doing an upgrade if, if something happens during the upgrade. It manages the containers through container D, the orchestration. It always is being commanded by the controller over that open API. And then on the Application side, there could be K3S clusters and Azure IoT edge runtimes, and you can deploy Windows, you know, host OS, Ubuntu, host OS, whatever you want, multi-tenant containers. So it actually turns your edge nodes into a part of the cloud if you're in the DevOps position, because again, IT has deployed these things in windmills and trucks and robots and all these places. And then the developer operation just sees them as yet another container or VM that they're running. And uh, hardware people or IT people get to actually choose their favorite hardware. The DevOps get to choose their favorite op operate applications and clouds. And so everyone's happy and you save money with this centralized management and less complexity. And the way I look at it is the edge software today it gets exposed to the weather of cyber attacks, right? Because um, it's out there, it's in a different space. And if you put the Zadita umbrella or the Zumbrella over it, then your IT people on top pull all of that edge software into the, the developer operations centers. So that makes it much easier. And now I just want to talk a little bit more about what's under the hood of EvoS. It heavily leverages Alpine Linux. 
Um, Alpine is, you know, rather than being a full blown big stack, it's, you know, just enough OS for any occasion. So it's like your integration hub of apps. And if you compare its size, for example, good taste and core components, you compare its size compared to a server or desktop OS of Linux, it is a lot smaller. So there's a busy box loser land and these ellipses. So um, no nonsense in its system. It's, it's going to get you there with little extra. And it has just enough package management, fresh port served daily. Mm, I can smell that fresh bread, yum. You can just add packages as you need. The packages are nicely organized by the Alpine uh, Linux community. And it's basically a, you know, composed of uh, Evo S's unit integration is an OCI container image. Um, so it's uh, again, heavily leverages the Alpine Linux community. Then within that, Evo S also leverages Linux Kit and ContainerD. So OCI containers are composed by Linux Kit, which is the build tool and collection of software. And uh, the final image is about 250 megs and times two is 500. That's how we got to that, about that size you'll need on your edge hardware. And at runtime, everything is orchestrated by container D. So um, now yeah, I have doing pretty well on time here. Um, now I'm going to do a install demo using iPixie. So let me pull over, Let's see if this, uh, oops, wait, I got it. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, over a couple of different tabs and see if we can open this up for a demo. Uh, actually, I wanna show you a preview of the demo first. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the combination of Equinix Metal, which has bare metal servers that you can just rent. Um, I'm gonna rent one of their servers and I'm gonna use an iPixie config file to bring up Evo S on that server. It's in some data centers, but it's, I'm pretending that data center is my edge field operation site. I'm gonna de deploy um, Evo S onto it in real time from scratch. And then I'm gonna use its IP address, which is kind of the only thing I know about it right now because I don't have actually have physical access to the hardware. And I'm gonna kind of cheat and use that IP address as a unique ID to bring it in and onboarding it to my Z Cloud orchestration service. And so how this works is we have uh, release images of EvoS on GitHub. And in these releases, there's a bunch of configuration files for different purposes. This one that has the little uh, dot .ip .cfg, uh, ipixie is a configuration file that will let me do this kind of bootstrapping of, of onboarding it with the IP address. So essentially we're booting from, booting EvoS from GitHub. And we use this a lot in software deployment testing and configuration. You don't have to like physically build up other servers, all the sort of the way that uh, iPixie allows you to do this is really quite handy. And, um, and you could also use it to set up staging environments for training or pre-production testing or whatever you want. So this is uh, what happens in this configuration file is just, uh, you know, points to the URL of the source code. And then there's a whole bunch of instructions for, for the download for the boot and stuff. So let me see if I can pull up that. Uh, let me just exit just a second and find that other window. Here we go. Okay, so now I got to get on the glasses so I can see the fine print. Um, this page under the EvoS project, under the docs folder deployment.md, has a section about deploying with iPixie. So you get to this section deploying EvoS in physical environments on bare metal and running the installer image via iPixie. So the first thing I have to do is log into my Equinix Metal account and pull up a server on demand. Again, this is the, the first part of this is actually 
described in this document of how I would do this. And I want a server close by, let's say in Silicon Valley. I'm going to pick the cheapest one, T1 small x86, and I'm going to do the custom iPixie build. And then I'm going to fetch this config right here. Only I know that since I wrote that doc, we're up to about uh, version 12. Doesn't actually matter too much what version you get in there because once you get it onboarded and orchestrated, you can just upgrade EvoS um, to the latest version. So this is going to be my Silicon Valley 2 as well. I'm going to do, oops, it's just so we can see the ones, whoops, two. Okay, so this is our ones demo of the Silicon Valley node. And that's actually all I have to do. I could also optionally just write this whole uh, config by adding user data, but since the config's already done for me, I'm just gonna deploy that now. What that does is it's actually throwing that config file onto this box. And on this box, it's going to boot it up and quickly, I already get a network here. And so I already have an IP address I can use for my onboarding. And with that, I better log in here to my say control account. So I, we have an LF edge kind of demo space. And for my edge nodes, I'm going to, um, let me just go back here. I'm going to add an edge node. So, this process of doing a ones demo G and select the default project. And I could add tags and asset IDs and asset locations, all sorts of stuff, but um, I'm not going to do that. So for this serial number, I need to add my IP address. So I'm gonna copy that IP address and that's going to be my serial number. And then you need the secret onboarding key, which I have copied over in my other doc. You can get that from me, you can get that from Zadita. And then I have to know the brand of the box. And this happens to be, um, pretty sure it's a super, let's see, super micro, if we show the T1 small x86, there we go. And now that it knows, because of that model, it knows the network interfaces and all the other ports. Everything is virtualized. I'm going to assign the Ethernet networks to the management interface. And the interface usage, you could, you know, unused management interface, which is management is like that the Z cloud, Z control interface, or a specific app or runtime or, or what have you. So you can assign all of those. And this is just a demo and I want to immediately activate that edge node. So if I click add, then I have requested. Basically now my Z control box is looking for this box. So here's my ones demo KG. So now it's provisioned on the controller side. Eve's controller knows to look for it. And now Eve itself is booting and having to deploy all this software. And once it gets everything done, the certificates and so forth, then it's going to phone home. Um, so this is my Equinix metal box. It's my deployed edge server pretend. And it's got an IP address. It's alive, and if I look at maybe it's traffic, a tiny bit of traffic maybe coming inbound. Yeah, a little bit of traffic going. So that, that's a good sign. Um, you can look up all sorts of things about it and the network interfaces and um, overview. And, and when you're done with these, because you rent them by the hour, the thing I'll do after this demo is over, I'll just delete the whole thing and poof, it's gone. And it's seven cents an hour, so it won't set me or the company back too far. So again, if you look at this uh, document, you 
to just review what we did. I selected a server. I did custom iPixie boot and um, deployed that. And you can also use a CLI. So there's an API to talk to Equinix Metal. So you can do this all software programmatically to, to create your devices. And uh, this is all the other ways that you can bring up EvoS. You can install, most of the time you install using just a USB stick and you plug the USB stick into the hardware box and it has an installer image that goes into, that boots EvoS onto the bare metal, onto the hard drive. With a Raspberry Pi, you can even flash a live EvoS image onto your SD card, or you can use the USB approach, which writes to the SD card. Um, there's some virtual images ways to do it in virtual environments to, to play around with it. But anyway, check out, in general, check out, Eve has this docs folder, which is just full of great information right from the start from this readme. It talks about everything about the security, the containerization, how the controller works, the runtime configs. And then the whole idea is application software management, you know, managing the life cycles of your software, blowing them away, upgrading them, changing them, and never losing the secure ownership of the box itself. So here's my server. So what, what we want to look for in Z control is there's the events that is ready to be provisioned. And then it usually takes about, I would say five minutes for this whole server boot process to, to complete and for it to phone home and finally get um, the secure TLS handshake between it and its controller, which is also in the cloud. So we'll take a look at that. And we'll look at this basic info slide. Once it shows it has a IP address, we know it's, it's on board. Um, and then the other things that I could show you while we're waiting here is just a marketplace of different types of applications that I might want to deploy. You know, there's EdgeX Foundry and Fledge and, you know, Hello Eve is something I was playing around with, which is deploying a little web service. But there's, you can run um, Kubernetes and Azure IoT and DBs and MQTT and all sorts of crazy stuff, including Ubuntu uh, full-blown um, host OSs. So there's, there's a lot that you can deploy. And there's a lot of different hardware models that, uh, that you can deploy too. And so let's go back to our node. Oh, and I missed it. Here we are, state is, is online. If I go back to the events, we see that it registered. It changed from provision to online. It's, it's uh, now online and then now it's ready to, to, for me to deploy something to it. So for example, I could take this Hello Eve application here and I would just deploy it as an edge app. And I go through and you know, select the project, the deployment, which node I want to deploy to next. And some of these, um, it's low, whoop, and uh, all sorts of other stuff. And the Kubernetes clusters, there's a whole page for Kubernetes clusters in, in your instances so that you get the Again, it's more like the IT technology part that you have to set up. Um, and then once you do that, then people manage it as if it's part of the regular cloud. So this is my, oh, this is my Hello Eve for ARM. This is the one I deployed on my Raspberry Pi. So never mind this. I'm going to cancel this. It's not going to run on me. Um, not going to run on the x86. But you get the idea. Here's my, um, whoops, back to my. Back to my online uh, hardware, and here's my basic info. And then here's where you would set up uh, in the adapters, you would set up all of your IT. Um, you can set up the rules. Actually, this is in the applications. You set up the rules for all of the uh, port forwarding or ins and outs or things like that. And so it looks like one of these ethernet interfaces is up and one's not. And if we look back here, there's traffic. We see a little bit more traffic going in and out. And that's that's basically it, you know? So you can see how quickly I took EvoS. I took the iPixie install, 
and I put the whole thing together with the deployed box and the controller. And now I'm able to deploy my software to it and manage it um, how I want. So let's drop that again, go back to this. And the, um, the key takeaway that I want you all to get out of this talk is that a lightweight EVOS can actually offer heavyweight security. So this is one of the, just it's going to revolutionize the edge in terms of how we can centrally manage, simplify, and reduce the IT costs of, of ownership and not lose control to ransomware and cyber attacks. Because the only person with the keys to the box is that TLS link to the controller. And everything else is untrusted software over the top. So the more you can push your, your teams that have to deploy edge boxes toward this approach, or if you have applications that you want to be deployed you know, uh, to the edge, then get your applications into the marketplace of a commercial controller or package them so that they can be deployed, containerized or as VMs. And then anybody running EVS will be able to do that. So key takeaway, lightweight EVS, heavyweight security. And um, I want to thank you all for your time and let you know that uh, I run the developer program at Zavita. So my commercial advertisement here is that if you contact me with my email, kathy at zavita.com, I can probably get you into our developer program where you get a free access to Z Cloud account and get to try all this out. It's great for system integrators, OEMs, and of course, customers that have to manage their services in the field. So thank you all for your time and I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, Edge Networking event. Thank you.